Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll have some advice for farmers and agribusinesses for managing risk in these tough economic times. We'll take you to a brand new pig barn in Lemoore, North Dakota and tell you how that facility will help maintain the health of pigs. And one of the nation's leading soil science experts shares his knowledge on cover crops and improving your soil. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Rose Dunn. In these tough economic times for agriculture, farmers aren't the only ones struggling. Elevators and other agribusinesses must cope with higher risk. Michael Pates talked to some of the participants at the annual Minnesota Grain and Feed Meeting and Trade Show in Prior Lake, Minnesota, to see what can be done to manage risk. Commodity-based business has a high level of volatility, and that means a high level of risk, especially now when prices are so low. Kent T.C., a farm management analyst and ag banker, sees a continued pattern of tight margins for some time to come. It's good to review, really break your farm down if, if need be, uh, get some outside help, sit down, go through it enterprise by enterprise, analyze where you're at and figure out What's making you money? What's costing you money? Are there adjustments you can make to make it work better? Minnesota Ag Commissioner Dave Fredrickson fears a trade war caused by tariffs could drive prices even lower. I just want clear acknowledgement that agriculture is critically important across the country uh, and that profitability is, is very important. You have to live today to be around tomorrow. And I don't hear that at this point in time. Bob Zelenka, one of the event's organizers, agrees. Uncertainties over trade and tariffs are leaving farmers and ag businesses nervous. I wouldn't be surprised to see China and some others, uh, allies of ours even, uh, retaliating in some way and probably using agricultural uh, commodities as a tool. And that would certainly you know, go uh, from bad to worse for us in agriculture. The director of Minnesota's Farm Service Agency is keeping a close eye on the discussions about payment programs as Congress works out the 2018 Farm Bill. And he expects an increase in loan numbers this year. If you think you're, you, you're going to have to work on your credit situation, it's best to get in and talk to your lender as soon as possible uh, because we have a limited number of resources and people, so we could be backlogged. While most are bracing for another challenging year, the experts say there are a number of steps you can take to maximize profits. In Prior Lake, Minnesota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. Another hot topic at the meeting was the 199A tax issue, which gives co-ops an advantage over corporate elevators, but most expect it to be corrected soon. The issue of dicamba drift damage is a new target for those who already criticize pesticide use. The Pesticide Action Network, or PAN, is trying to learn more about dicamba, then spread that information to farmers and the public. PAN Director Kristen Schaefer spoke recently at the Midwest Organic and Sustainable Education Services Conference in Wisconsin. Representing the staunchest critics of chemical crop protection, she paints a gloomy future for what others see as vital weed control. We would say that the, the solution of then introducing new, more toxic chemicals um, keeps farmers on this pesticide treadmill. And, and the projections are that there will be resistance to dicamba within, weed scientists are saying, within three years. Um, so then there'll be another generation of even more toxic herbicides. So to us, it raises the question of, of whether this model is working for farmers and for our food system. And, and we would argue that it's not. We want to talk about um, how people can protect themselves from it, what's happening on the national level, how um, other farmers are using it, and trying to gain more understanding about the effects of what it is on crops, not just organic crops, but all crops. PAN is part of a lawsuit against the EPA for approving dicamba. Schaefer says PAN is also working with farmer groups to track and influence state and federal dicamba regulations. One of the keys to solving off-target movement of dicamba is to avoid applying it during temperature inversions. This season, South Dakota farmers will have a new tool to help them determine when and where inversions occur. 
Temperature inversions happen when a layer of cooler air is overlain by a layer of warmer air, allowing volatilized chemicals and other vapors to move great distances. The label prohibits applying dicamba during inversions. Laura Edwards, the South Dakota State Climatologist, says farmers will be able to find out how stable the atmosphere is live in real time this growing season using the state's Mesonet website. That's vital information for preventing dicamba drift. We just want folks to understand that, that they do occur very often and to be especially cautious out there. The SDSU Mesonet has about 30 stations. It's similar to the North Dakota Agricultural Weather Network, or ANDON, based at NDSU in Fargo, which has 70 stations. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to a new temperature-controlled pig barn where the animals are never given any antibiotics. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Get your row crops off to the right start with an Early Riser Case IH planter from Tight Machinery. Case IH Early Riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH Early Riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Tight Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, five right here, and I have them times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. No livestock producer wants to have sick animals, but the Fairview Colony west of Lamore, North Dakota, has a special interest in keeping its pigs healthy. Its market depends on it. The colony sells its pigs to Coleman Natural Foods of Sioux City, Iowa, but they only buy the animals that have never, ever had antibiotics. As Jenny Schlecht found, that makes keeping their animals healthy all the more important. The Fairview Colony of Lamore, North Dakota hopes its new 6,000 head feeder pig barn will keep their pigs healthy enough that they can maintain their status of never ever using antibiotics. It's a state of the art barn. It was built to really take great care of the pigs in an individualized way. Kyle Schumann is the regional business manager for Standard Nutrition Systems. The company has worked with the Fairview Colony for 20 years, helping to keep their pigs healthy. These pigs, uh, 24 hours a day, they're monitored through the systems that they have here uh, for ventilation, for water, uh, for temperature, humidity. All these things are very well taken care of, so these pigs are, are reared properly. The Fairview Colony farrows 1,100 sows. They had been renting four barns for finishing. The two new ones cost about a million dollars each, something the colony thinks is a good investment. They get a premium for their animals never having antibiotics, and they believe this facility is better for their pigs. It's more healthier. If a pig is outside, 
and uh, it rains, they get messy, and, and then if they're, if you get them on the ground, they dig around, and the manure facility is gonna be gone here. It, it'll stay fairly dry. With the ventilation system, they don't slop around in their own manure, you know. We want the healthiest pig possible so we can create the best meat product possible. In Lamar, North Dakota, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Whip says at first neighbors were concerned about the smell, but he says after meeting with them, questions were answered and the colony was given the go-ahead. The Red River Valley of eastern North Dakota and western Minnesota is the nation's leading sugar beet growing region. And the annual Sugar Beet Institute is often billed as the nation's largest sugar beet trade show. Jonathan Knutson was there and has more on this year's outlook. The Red River Valley is the nation's leading sugar beet producer. We're here at the nation's leading sugar beet trade show. I think growers are very optimistic. Dwayne Motts is executive director of the Red River Valley Sugar Beet Growers Association. He says recent precipitation is both good and bad. Sugar beet farmers are always interested in an early start because we tend to have better yields with earlier planting. So we may have a little bit of a delay on planting date just because of recent precipitation. There are a lot of areas that needed the water. So some people are saying this is a good thing. Other people are thinking it slows down the planting season. But you know, it, it's early. We have plenty of time to warm up and, and melt the snow and, and get in the field. Growers are optimistic about prices, which are up from the lows of a few years ago. The slowing of sugar imports is a big relief. We think we have that fixed today, and we're very optimistic about our future. As long as those things stay in balance, as long as USDA correctly monitors and, and delegates the right amount of sugar in our country, we're, we'll be fine, and, and we're very optimistic. We'll have another good year. Extension sugar beet specialist Mohammed Khan says sugar beet farmers were quick to adopt new technology. That's helped to make this area the nation's sugar basket. Rather than planting, let's say 700,000 acres in this area here 20 years ago, we're now only doing maybe 500,000 acres or a little bit less and getting the same or even more sugar than 20 years ago. So it's all called efficiency, improving the efficiency. Sugar beets have been a crucial part of the area economy for many decades. This show helps that continue. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. About 1,800 people attended this show, and at least 120 companies showed off about $5 million worth of equipment. Most who attend the show are from the upper Midwest, but it does draw some from across the country and even some international visitors. Some areas are still seeing white as we inch towards spring. Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, one of the world's leading cover crop experts with some tips on improving your soil. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. DTE is your headquarters for flatbeds and service bodies for your truck. Whether you need to haul bales, heavy commercial equipment, or take every tool with you, DTE has the truck equipment you need. We have over 200 units on hand or will custom build a flatbed or service body on your truck. Like this Dewey's bale bed with dual lift cylinder arms. Lift load and handle your bales with ease. When you need help at the farm, your business, or in the oil patch, count on DTE. DTE, let us build a truck for you. This is Dennis Poliski. If you're trying to save a little money this spring but still need to make a major purchase before planting, check out resourceauction.com. Our March 26 auction is chock full of good units that will sell to the highest bidder. Our suppliers have made the decision to liquidate equipment and this is without a doubt the region's premier spring consignment event. Hundreds of units from 2010 and up with many tractors, trucks, and combines. Check it out at resourceauction.com and we'll see you on March 26. 
Levisol is the most advanced nutrient efficiency solution, making phosphorus, zinc, and other key micronutrients more available to the plant. With three modes of action, it unlocks the nutrients in the soil, it makes the nutrients that it's applied with more available, and it is mobile in the plant for season-long activity. For more information, talk with your agronomy partner or visit WCDST.com. Weather portion of Ag Week now. You know, one way to ease concerns about a potential drought, because there have been people talking about drought again this summer, is to never let summer happen. Now, obviously that's a joke, but we have seen a, a remarkably cool and wet weather pattern take over the Northern Plains over the last few weeks. And it looks like that that trend is going to continue. Staying cool, in fact, reinforcing chilly weather, especially in the Northern Plains and in particular, North Dakota, looks like a lot of relatively cold weather over the next couple of weeks. More snow is likely and some of that of course will be falling in the form of rain. Signs of spring you're going to have to look to the geese. There are some of those flying north but uh, not a lot of uh, any signs of spring at the ground. Of course the weather system around this weekend that's going to move on eventually. It's going to move into the Great Lakes. Lots of rain on the south side of this one. Looks like it'll eventually turn perhaps into some stormy weather down in the southeast around midweek. And then as the cold temperatures sort of get reinforced coming out of Canada, there may be one or two little systems not confident that those will generate much snow and they may mostly stay as Canadian systems. Out west, the jet stream is about to take hold of a split pattern, which will likely do the job of stalling the atmosphere down and it will do so at a time that will reinforce this low pressure trough in the middle, which means the cool, wet weather will likely continue. One piece of uh, uh, change that will happen with this block, though, is that uh, the West Coast will get an opportunity to dry out. And based on the time of the year, the present weather system that's been so wet out there might be the last one of the season. Meanwhile, here's what we're looking forward to as we look to the second week. Looks like with this trough in place, the dry weather out west ridging along the West Coast. Looks like we'll be poised for another Pacific system to bring uh, rain and snow out into the Northern Plains. I can't possibly tell you the placement of this. This will be sometime the first week of April, however. That would then move into the eastern states, turn into a pretty wet system for the Corn Belt and potentially another nor'easter for parts of the east coast. Temperature-wise, it's obviously cool this weekend. Warm weather is remaining down south. Lots of cool throughout the northern Rockies, and it will generally stay below average over the next uh, couple of weeks over this area. As the ridge develops out west, the warm temperatures will start streaking northward. Maybe even some relatively warm days getting up into Washington and British Columbia, but the cool will remain around here. And as we slip on past Easter into the first week of April, I think we may have several days that are below freezing right in the northern plains. So it's definitely a chilly weather pattern and a wet pattern, and I really don't see an end to that. We stay cool. We stay wet. There's really no sign of spring for the time being, we're just going to have to do some dancing for that. Seriously, it'll warm up in April, but it does look like it will stay wet for the foreseeable future across the Northern Plains. Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Micro Essentials is a unique product in the sense where it's a homogenized product that has four nutrients in every single granule. It makes it different than other products that are out in the country. So it has four different nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, which is two forms of sulfur, and zinc in every granule. 
We're seeing multiple things. We have sulfate sulfur and elemental sulfur. The sulfate sulfur, we get the bulk of the use of it the first year. The elemental breaks down over time. I've had farmers come up to me and tell me that they not only see the benefit the first year in higher yield or higher quality, but they're seeing it in consecutive years. So it's a huge benefit for the grower to use it on a consecutive basis. Our overall goal is to increase our farmers' yields and help them produce a higher quality and higher yielding crop. It's giving them the opportunity to get more nutrients in one. It makes sense agronomically, it makes sense economically. Stein Seed Company is home to one of the most prolific, highest yielding corn and soybean breeding programs in the world. When it comes to research, yield is what matters most. With the largest private soybean breeding program in the U.S. and the industry's most aggressive corn research, Stein is in a class of its own when it comes to developing new, higher-performing seed. Choose genetics. Choose results. Give Shane Kylo a call at 701-866-9864 to learn what Stein Seed can do for your operation. The Ag Week Soil Health Minute is sponsored by the North Dakota Corn Council and the North Dakota Soybean Council. Cover crops and soil health are gaining in popularity across the nation and especially in the upper Midwest. At the recent Midwest Cover Crops Council, NDSU soil health specialist Abby Wick sat down with one of the legends in this field, Dr. Ray Weil from the University of Maryland. So this is a real treat for me today where we have Dr. Ray Weil on the Soil Health Minute. And, and Ray, you've been working in cover crops since 2000 and also in, in soil health for 40 years. And what's the most interesting thing that you've learned over that time? As I studied no-till and as I worked with farmers and you see it happening you know in the first couple of years it's not so impressive but when you look at fields that haven't seen any tillage for 30 or 40 years and you look at what that soil system is like it's much more like the natural system in the forest or in the prairie and you realize what a mess we make of soil as a material as a system when we plow it. So here in, in North Dakota, we talk a lot about picking a goal and then choosing your soil health building practices around that goal. And for a majority of the farmers here, it's erosion control. Well, erosion is, is of course, the first thing. If you lose the soil, you've lost, you, you know, game's over, right? For 10,000 years, human beings have been farming soils and thinking they need to plow them up and destroying civilizations, you know, one after another, running through their soil resources, destroying it, because they didn't know better. They didn't know how to control the erosion. It wasn't until the middle of the 20th century that we realized what really causes erosion is that raindrop impacting the soil. It's not an obvious thing. You think it's the water running off, but it's not. It's the raindrop impacting the soil. You've got to keep the soil covered and armored, and then you don't have erosion problems. So you've worked quite a bit with, with cereal rye and radish, and those are two of the most common cover crops we're using here in, in North Dakota. Cereal rye is the most common cover crop anywhere. It's so easy to grow. You can plant it late, it manages to survive the winter, you get some kind of cover. But it has some real downsides. One is it ties up nitrogen. Okay. If you let it grow in, enough to add biomass to the soil, you're going to pay a price if you're trying to grow a corn crop into that, if it's a nitrogen using crop. And so that's something that scares farmers. They don't want to see it grow very big, and so they kill it early. And then they don't get very much from the cover crop. What's been the most fascinating things you've learned about a, a, a radish and what it does in the soil? Survey of farmers using cover crops, what is the reason they're interested in cover crops? The number one thing is usually compaction. And that's when I started doing research on biodrilling, which is a really different way of solving compaction. So if you can get roots to grow down and leave channels, they create sort of super highways through the soil that your crop roots will continue to follow. It's, a, it's a, like an infrastructure. It's like building the interstate system. Those are going to be there pretty much forever if you don't mess them up with tillage. The radish really stood out in its ability to do this. Dr. Ray Weil, thank you very much for joining us on the Soil Health Minute. Coming up on Ag Week TV. We're on the road celebrating National Ag Week at Ag Day at the Pavilion. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. 
Get ready for the biological revolution. Agzyme by Ag Concepts is the leading biological soil enhancement product on the market today. Agzyme improves soil health and fertilizer efficiency for healthier crops and better yields. Definitely is making a difference. I really feel that it gives me a bump in the soybeans and corn. I would say 55 up to 70 bushel soybeans. We even had as high as 75. Probably the best bang for your buck. Join the biological revolution with Agzyme by Ag Concepts. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. This is National Ag Week. Various activities boost awareness of what farmers do. In Sioux Falls, the farm came to the city this week. More than 50 farm groups and agribusinesses set up learning stations for kids and their families to learn about ag and food production. Michelle Rook takes us to Ag Day at the Pavilion. Most consumers are several generations from the farm, but here at Ag Day at the Pavilion, they can learn more about the state's number one industry, agriculture. More than 2,500 Sioux Falls area consumers participated in hands-on educational activities about farming. Not very often do we get the opportunity to sit down with kids and teach them about agriculture and furthermore teach them about food and how it's grown. They also got to interact with various live farm animals from baby chicks to lambs. And so they're able to feel them and ask questions and then we also have um, byproducts that they can um, again feel in touch. The kids saw the connection between agriculture and science, like the importance of soil health and food production. So we're teaching the kids we have six inches of topsoil, and that's what supports life. And they love learning where their food comes from, which is the goal of organizers. It helps me learn more about farms and a lot of things that I don't know before. They're learning, man, I don't just get my food at in the freezer aisle or in the produce section. Like, There's a lot of people involved to make this happen. In Sioux Falls, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. Ag Week's photo contest to celebrate National Ag Day is almost complete. Today, Saturday, March 24th, is the final day to vote for your favorites on agweek.com. The top five winners will be announced in the March 26th edition of Ag Week magazine and will also be shown next week on Ag Week TV and on agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next week.